Just by a show of hands, by a show of hands, who's, who's been in a, a, a Genborn uh, WordCamp talk uh, in the past? All right. And so I, I, I first uh, met Jen or saw Jen uh, at a WordCamp talk, and I was immediately uh, blown away. And I said, this is, this is my people. And so, you know, we need, I, I knew right then we needed to meet. Uh, we became friends. We became <laughs> we became uh, collaborators on on projects. Uh, we've been in a mastermind group together. We've shared ideas. Um, um, we are simpatico, um, and so I really uh, do have a, a a true respect for what Jen does, what she's accomplished in her business, uh, what she's done over the years. And so I'm going to turn things over to Jen to talk about. Uh, Sometimes that you maybe sometimes that you have failed uh, in business and what your takeaways were, <laughs> so that we can all learn from that. Welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. So I'm just gonna come up and I'm just gonna list my failures. Yeah. Okay. There's so many. <laughs> um, so one of the things I think one of before I I list some some failures I think one of the things I think is interesting. Um, a few years back, I had this weird thing start happening where I was, would speak at an event or I'd be at an event and during Q&A or sometimes afterwards, somebody would come up and say, can you just tell me about something you do terrible? Terrible? Yeah. Well, can you tell me something you're terrible at? What? <laughs> and I had it happen in Q&A. Can you just talk about some stuff you're terrible at? <laughs> and then I'm like, this is really weird and it happened three or four times. And then it started happening on social media. And I will post something and somebody be like, that's great, but can you touch it? What are you terrible at? I want to know what you're terrible at. And here's the thing that you need to know about me. I'm good at a lot of stuff, but I'm not great at anything, right? Like, you can, like you're good at a lot of things, but I think the, the people that are truly spectacular in one area, like, I don't, I don't resonate with that at all. I'm like, I'm good at a lot of stuff. Um, so I think it was an interesting thing, and I'd say, why does everybody want to know how much I suck at stuff? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I had this conversation with someone, and they're like, yes, but on, you know, you've probably heard the thing like social media is the highlight reel, right? You see everybody's successes. And of course I'm going to post food that I make that's awesome. I'm not going to post the waffle thing that we tried that came out so crappy I had to turn my waffle iron upside down and like shoot water at and like scrape everything out because it was <laughs> horrid and it, it made us want to puke. Like I'm not sharing that. Um, so you don't share all the terrible things. You're only sharing, you know, the good things. And what I found is, you know, I'm, I'm not thinking about sharing all the bad because that's not, I mean, yeah, you don't share your dirty laundry. I'm like, I don't share all that bad stuff. Um, but that's what people who were aware of what I was doing were like, I just want to know shit that you're bad at. Like, I just want to know, like, where do you fail? And so I love the idea of talking about failures yeah. here because so many times you never talk about the fact that um, while I have a good reputation of customer service and client management, I have lost it on a client. What? Like, so bad. <laughs> oh. um, like, so bad. Brian, like, comes in the office and he's like, no! <laughs> Right, he's like horrified, and I'm just, keep going. It was so bad. Um, but they saved my clients, so yay. Um, but it was so bad. Right, nobody, talk, you're not, nobody talks about those things. Um, Nathan shared that he lost a, t uh, a huge portion of his income in one day. That's happened to me like four times. But we don't go on social, and it's like, my biggest client just quit today. I'm not sure how I'm going to fill that in. Great, let's hustle. Like, those aren't the things that you're talking about or sharing. Sure. Um, or the bad business decisions that you make. Like, I, I did a, a deal with the county that I live in. Um, we're a huge farm-to-fork area in Northern California, and I did a deal with the county. They came to me, and they're like, we want to be able to provide websites to all our local farmers that don't have an online presence. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Totally in. And we negotiated this deal, and... I was earlier on in my business and I wasn't super savvy and I didn't have a mastermind and I didn't really have people I could turn to and I did the deal and it was the worst thing I've ever done, ever. And, um, and it, was, it was horrible. 
So, but those aren't things I'm gonna go talk about because I'm not gonna go talk about my clients badly. You know, you don't, you don't go air your dirty laundry in your sure. business and go talk about your clients badly. So we don't share those kinds of things or the days where you're like, I built this business and I hate it and I wanna quit. You know, I don't post on social that I told Brian, I hate the business that I built. Like, go, like I quit. Go find another designer. I don't even wanna do this anymore. Because what if a client saw that and they're like, ooh, maybe we should hire somebody else. Right, those are all the things that we keep and we don't talk about. But everybody goes through it. And so when you and you were talking about, well, today we're talking about failure, I was like, I don't wanna talk about that. But then I was like, but it's something important that we have to talk about because everybody goes through it and when you're going through it, oftentimes you think, then the only person this is happening to. Or maybe you don't have people to talk to. Um, in the really, really early years of my business, um, when I started freelan like when I started freelancing, it wasn't my idea. It was Brian's. He's like, "Don't people that you do what you do do it at home?" Like I'm doing all the kids stuff, and I was pregnant, and he's like, "I don't want to do all the kids stuff for two kids." Like, can't you quit and just work at home? And I was, was like, "Yeah, probably." And the next day, he's like, "I got you a business license," and I figured out a business name, and I filed it all. So this is happening, but I didn't know anybody who freelanced. I didn't, I didn't know anybody who freelanced. I didn't know anybody that worked at home. I didn't know anybody that owned a business, let alone anybody that did that, that had a, that had a two-year-old and was pregnant or had a baby. And so I was really, really alone. And then I found this women's networking organization and I joined it and um, my business was taking off, but I didn't know how to do business and I was undercharging. And so I was charging a lot, really, really little, but I was doing a lot of work and I was working 16, 17, 18 hour days, seven days a week, every day, and I was drowning. But my business was great on the outside. Like I was making a ton of money, but I was dying. And I go to these events and I talk to my friends at these events who are other women business owners where I'm looking for support. And they're like, how are things going? And I'm like, well, my business is amazing, but like I, I have too much business. Or like I'm not, like if I take less, like I, I need this to pay my mortgage, but like I'm not, I'm not sure how to handle what's going on. And they say, oh gee, we wish we had your problems. Shut up. <laughs> right? Like they just were like, oh, like there was no one to turn to huh. at the time. Right? And I think a lot of people get stuck in that spot at some point in your business. Right, so I've gone, I mean, Born Creative is now, this, is, this will be 14 years in July. Congratulations. Um, thank you. Mm -hmm. but I've been doing this for, this, it'll be 21 years um, that I've been in this career. And it's, I think, I always say, I'm like, every bad decision you can make, I've totally made. So ask me all the things. <laughs> so a running theme I've heard today mm -hmm. um, from you and the previous speakers is about developing a support system. Mm -hmm. Right? You talked about burnout. Right? You talked about being alone mm -hmm. and, or feeling alone. Mm -hmm. Right? And so, and you went and you sought out a support system. Ultimately, what became your support system? That is a really good question. Uh, I pay, so uh, the very first place uh, I looked for a support system, I paid a crap ton of money to join uh, an online mastermind program facilitated by a business coach. Okay. Uh, a really, really well-known one. But it was a multiple five-figure, like it was, it was expensive. Okay. Um, I think the first one I did, it was 30 grand. And, um, and I look, I was just so desperate to have somebody I could get support from or a community or a group to have support from. I was like, yes, let me give you your money. And she promised all the things. And it was terrible. <laughs> Worst loss ever. Most painful loss. Um, we did do have, I ended up getting half of my money back. But that was a $15,000 loss. Sure. But I was so desperate for that, right? Um, and I still believe in that process, so I did it again, but with somebody else. Um, still a big, still a big investment. And that one was a huge success for me. Okay. I found women who uh, owned businesses and had kids, and I found people who were doing the exact same thing I was doing in other industries, and some in the same industry. And finally, I felt like, oh my God, I can talk to somebody about how I don't, don't even know how to price my services value. And they're like, oh, well, I was in that boat too. Let me tell you how I fixed it. And it was amazing. 
Um, so that helped a lot. And then the second thing I realized is I need help in my business, right? I, I can't, you can't do everything. And I was at a point where I was, where I was thinking, I need to either hire somebody or, or uh, like, I, but I had no systems in place. I had no process in place. I'm like, I'm gonna hire somebody. What am I have them do? I don't know. I can't, I have nothing to be like, here, do this. I, don't, I, have no, I had nothing like that. So I'm like, I don't know what to do. And I had seen um, an ad from Infusionsoft that's like, the double your sales tour, replace an employee with software. And I'm like, what? Bought the ticket, flew down to LA, sat in the room, and I'm like, replace an employee with automation? Done. Bought the software, and I, auto <laughs> and I automated every single thing that you could possibly think of in my business. Like, everything, I'm like, document it, write it down, put it in a process, automate it, set it up, and I saved myself 50% of the admin time I was spending in my business. Really? And it was amazing. And the I got the through. The admin time, is that yeah. what you said? Okay. And, uh, and that was inspired me to look at other avenues of my business of where I could create systems and processes and things that could save time to delay me having to bring in somebody else. Uh, after that, my developer got super flaky because I'm a designer by trade. My degree's in print design. Um, my developer got super flaky. Brian needed to make an exit out of the fire department. Um, he had already been looking for, to make an exit, uh, but he got uh, cancer and needed to make a career change because the job tried to kill him. Um, and he's like, I think I could do that. I could probably do that. So he taught himself development, and Brian came in to my business as my developer, and eventually I was like, I always, my bio forever was like, um, Jennifer hired her husband to be her boss. Stupid decision. <laughs> <laughs> because I always joke, I'm like, I, I brought Brian into my business to do everything I don't like to do. Um, and for years, he always joked, he's like, my job is just clearing a path to get stuff out of your way so you can do things. Uh, and that made a huge difference. Uh, there were lots of tears in the first few months as he wanted to change all the things I had been pouring all my, my sure. li myself into. Yeah. Um, and I had to realize like some of the changes that are being recommended are in my own best interest, but they're things I couldn't see because I'm like this, right? You're so close to your own stuff. Um, so bringing in a business partner, we happen to be married, so that was easier, uh, made a huge difference. Uh, but also at the same time, you're being married to your business partner, they have some objectivity issues sometimes. Right, so our mastermind, right, that we had, you know, other things like that. Having trusted people in the community, like most people know, Lama and I are, are good friends. And, like, I always know, no matter what is going on in my business, if I'm stuck, if I'm like, crap, I don't even know what to do here, if I have a question, I can, there's always somebody that I can call and say, I need, I need a different perspective, right, I need something. Like, I could call you, I could call Chris, I could call Sean. Like, I have, the, having a group of people that you know that would never utter a word of that to anybody, that have got your back no matter what, there's something about that that's just like, okay, you got this, right? Or if something does go south, you've got people that can help pick you back up. Sure. Yeah. So my, uh, my parents were um, business partners for 35 years, mm -hmm. right? And I, frankly, I could never relate to that. <laughs> right, I, I just couldn't see it. Most I didn't, people don't get it. I didn't understand how that works. <laughs> I, I, I really just and so so talk to me about that for a second because how how do you separate running a business together and then running a family together and then being a couple? How do you separate those things? Uh, so we manage our kids and we manage our clients and we manage our relationship all in the exact same way. Same process, basically. Um, it's all very similar. We always joke managing your clients is like managing your kids. Uh -huh. um, but uh, so it is a lot easier for me to separate things than Brian. Okay. Uh, we no longer work together, in case nobody knew that. He left me in January. <laughs> <laughs> he abandoned our company <laughs> to go work somewhere else. Uh, so I'm back on my own. But for, for the years that we worked together, people would always be like, how do you do that? And I'm like, uh, we have separate offices in our house, uh -huh. so we don't share space because uh, I am messy and he is not. So we have separate offices. We both work with headphones on. And I'm like, if I need something from him, I'm like, slap, like, hey, dude, I need this. Send it to me. And he, like, sends it over. Like, we come out of our office at lunch. And we're like, hey. He's like, what are you making me for lunch? But... <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> to be fair, for the first 13 years we were married, Brian did 100% of the cooking, all of the cleaning, and all of the laundry, and all Whoa. of everything. I did nothing. That's a good catch. I'm like, my mom did everything for me as a kid. Why should I do it as an adult? Um, and Brian did everything as a kid, and I'm like, just keep on doing it all. Um, but when he, when, <laughs> when he got cancer, there was really nothing I could do for him except make food. And I was terrible at it because I didn't know how to cook, but I learned how to cook. Yeah. And then he was like, now that you're decent at this, I think I'm done. Like, I did it forever now, now it's your turn. So now he's like, if I don't cook, we're going out. But, um, but <laughs> uh, we've had conversations. Like, I tell people, working together for us was never a big issue. Like, it was, we never, it was, we've always done everything together, and some of it might have been, we got married the day after I turned 20, so we were babies. And we, I say, like, I kind of grew up into adulthood mm -hmm. with, we, like, we grew up together. So we've always done everything together, and business was no different. But there were days where I had to sit down and tell Brian, I need to feel like a wife and not a coworker. Like, you've been really busy. I've been really busy. Like, business has been taking up all of our time. Like, we haven't had a date night in a while, and I'm starting to feel like a coworker and not a beloved wife. So take me on a date. Right? So, um, so we have those moments where it's like, and some of that is open communication. Like yeah. I had, and he's like, oh my gosh, yes. Like, like, yeah, we've been going crazy. Like, it's busy. I'm sorry. Like, it's a little harder for him to shut all that stuff off. It just is. Yeah. It's his personality. So uh, date nights were something that we, we started doing. And uh, I don't post all our date night selfies anymore because it was irritating people. Um, because we do date nights more than anybody else I know. So we, we, do, we do date nights at least once a week, sometimes yeah. two or three times a week. Good. Um, but we go, to, we go to the bar and we go to shows and we see bands and, and that's what we do. But we get out of the office and we leave all the stuff. When you work at home, for us, it was like, we gotta leave home. Like, I am in an office, I close my door and I'm like, I'm done. But Brian's in the, it, Brian has the whole entire front half of the house now. So, but it's the front half of the house. Like, there's no closing a door. So for him, it was, it was harder to, to let all that go. So we're like, nope, we got to leave the house. Let's go out to dinner. Let's go see a band. Let's go to the bar. Let's go hang out with friends. Like, let's get out. And that's made a, that's made a huge difference. The two things I'm thinking about, right? come to think of it, my parents had separate offices. Yeah, Which no, is probably, I mean, they had two very share. separate offices. I, I tried to get Brian to share my space at one point, And he was like, are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> are you crazy? <laughs> But no. to, re to, to reflect, reflect back on something that Nathan said, it sounds like what uh, the key to making this work, making what, what, what you made work, was open communication, mm -hmm. right, on both sides, right? Oh, yeah, uh, and with our kids, the same thing. Like, we, uh, when I know it's going to be a particularly busy week, I have big deadlines, Brian has a lot of meetings, like, we've got stuff going on at the beginning of the week, sometimes we'll say, all right, guys, this week's going to suck. Like, we're probably going to work some late nights, we've got some big deadlines, like, you're on it, take care of your... Like, you have to take care of your stuff this week. When they were really little and they couldn't understand all that, like, we have always been super open with our kids. They know our finances. They know our business status. Like, they know everything. Uh, everything that we know about our existence of our family, they know. Mm -hmm. um, and when they were really little and they didn't understand all the things, like, when we relaunched the Born Creative website in 2014, we're like, we are going to knock this out in one month. But we're going to be so busy. Like, if you guys can be good. And you can do all your homework, and you can handle your stuff, and you do not make our lives hard at all. Like, when we're done, we're going to go to Disneyland for a week. Like, we're going to go. We're going to go for a week. We're not going to bring any work. It's going to be awesome. And so for the whole month, they had, we've always said, school's your job. Our business is our job, right? So you do your job. We're going to do our job. And at the end, we're both going to get an award for doing a good job, and we're going to go on vacation. And so we've always had that kind of open communication through, our, through the whole family. So we're always on the same page about expectations and what's going on. And if Brian's got a really busy day, I'm trying to pull work off his plate. If I've got a big deadlines, he's trying to pull work off my plate. If the kids have got tons and tons of homework, those are the days we're like, don't worry about anything, just get your stuff done. Like, we'll do all this stuff, right? Like, it's, it's a push and pull between all four of us of whoever has the most stuff to do that day gets priority in our family. And I mean, think this goes without saying, family relation and, and your relationship, that is a priority. Mm -hmm. That is your priority over your business. But one thing I know about you, and you just said it, said it very quickly about your trip to Disneyland. One thing I know about you is when you're on vacation, you're on vacation, right? You are disconnected, mm -hmm. right? There is no contacting you during that point. Is that right? Am I correct? Right? Yeah. So expand on that. Ex exp explain that. Explain why, why that's important. I 
point years in uh, my business with never taking a vacation. Or I would take a vacation, but I would work the whole entire time and then be like, why did we even go on vacation? You just worked the whole time. Uh, and it was, it was awful. Uh, and and we, we started little. Like people are always like, now we take like nine weeks of vacation a year um, and like lots of long weekends and things. But um, people would always say, how do you guys do that? I'm like, well, we started small. Like I started, my goal was like, let's do one day. <laughs> let's just do one day a week where I am not doing client work. Well, like one day. And then it was, let's try to go the whole weekend without doing client work, right? And then the, the next was, let's try to stop at five every day. Like, that was a big deal for me. And then it was, well, let's try to do a three-day weekend. Let's try to, I'm going to take a day off during the week. Right, so we started little and built it up and built it up and to built it up. But um, for, for me now, I'm better for my clients when I have a break. Yeah. Like, I know uh, I can... I can hustle hard and work my butt off for about six to eight weeks before I hit that point of I'm feeling burnout, right? Like that's about how far I can go before you start to reach that, oh, why am I even doing this? Like I'm exhausted, I'm getting tired, I'm getting burnt out. So as long as I know every six to eight weeks, I need to go on vacation. <laughs> like I need to go somewhere. It might be a three day weekend, a four day weekend, it might be a week, it might be a nine day road trip, whatever it is, every six to eight weeks, I need to do something where I'm disconnected and I'm gone. I need time for myself to recharge, to relax, so I can come back refreshed. Because guess what? When you're overwhelmed and you're burnt out and you're exhausted, you're not doing your best work. You're not giving your clients the best. And what we started to find is we're, I'm telling my clients, we're gone. So we're, we warn them way in advance. The clients who do get invited into our project management system, we plan all of our trips for the whole year in December. So we know every single trip we're taking the whole entire year in December. We load it all into our PM system. Our retainer clients know. Uh, those clients, they know every single day we're going to be out of the office for the year as soon as we know. For the rest, I would put it in my email signature. We're closed this week. We're closed this week. And we tell clients, get us your stuff by this date if you want it done before we're gone. Otherwise, it waits till we get back. And it would give them these mini deadlines that all of a sudden, everything would start getting it done. So my vacations would give clients all these mini deadlines. Because you know when you leave, all of a sudden, every single person wants everything done they've ever wanted in their entire life done before you go? So all of a sudden, all these mini deadlines, my projects were getting done faster because I was, le because I was out of the office and unavailable. Um, so I was doing better work. My clients were getting their projects done faster. And what's funny is some of our best clients started scheduling their vacations the same weeks that we wow. were Wow. <laughs> Three of our clients did that. They would take their summer vacations the same weeks that we were gone. So and nobody was working on anything. So I'm going to reiterate something you said for the audience, but really mostly for me, right? So when you are burned out, you're not doing your best work. No. And I need to take that to heart. Yeah. But something else you said, I kind of want to reflect on a few things you said. You're self-aware, right? So you know your limits, mm -hmm. right? You know when you're going to be burned out. You know how long you can go without a break, mm -hmm. right? And you're also managing expectations, both your own, your families, and your clients, mm -hmm. right? And you're managing them all around, and you're doing them well ahead of time so that everybody knows what to expect. So yeah. that when you're out, it's not a surprise. Right. And granted, if there's an emergency, they can get a hold of me. But I haven't had that happen. Good. The one emergency happened while we were on vacation once. It was with our own, it was with our own site. <laughs> so that was it. We, have, we haven't had to deal with it. All right, we've got time for a couple quick questions. Uh, let's, a hand went up over here first. So let's start over there. And I'll, get, I'll get you. I'm a project manager fan girl. What's your system? Um, my project management system? The we one you keep talking about. Oh, uh, well, I use Basecamp, but the, the client management and, and system that I create is called Profitable Project Plan. And it's just one that I created for myself. But the software that I use is Basecamp. Basecamp. Yeah. OK. Thanks, Jen. Question for you. You mentioned uh, automation. I'm a big fan. Uh, starting out, in particular, for a small business, what do you suggest? What are some viable examples of things you can automate? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, so I, examples of things that you can automate if you're just starting out. Um, anything that you do more than one time. It's, but anything that you do, if the best thing to do is to start writing down. Like I had a task book 
Uh, it was just lined, and, it, and uh, I printed it at FedEx office and bound it, but it sat on my desk, and I just documented every single thing that I did every day. I wrote it. I like writing things down on paper, so I did it that way uh, for months. I did that for months. And then I went back and I just grabbed a highlighter and it's like every single time there was this, I highlighted it in yellow and I flipped through the book while I was watching TV one night and highlighted it and I'm looking at these things and I'm like, I'm doing the same thing over and over and over, automate that. If there's something that you have to do on every single client project, automate it. If there's something you have to do uh, in your business administrative wise, figure out ways that you, can take, that you can automate it and take out the manual need to do that, right? Anything that is repetitive, no matter how small it is, if you can take it off your plate, it's one less thing that's gonna take up space in your mind, it's one less thing you have to do, and even if you're like, this only saves me five minutes, but if you're doing it 50 times, that adds up over time. Last question. Hey Jen, um, I was in your talk yesterday, and at the end you had a slide where you had a bunch of your different brands in your programs. Yeah. What is your secret to getting those programs done when you've got a bunch of client work, how did you structure your time and manage that? Uh, so two things. Uh, one, I do client work from roughly nine to five or like 10 to five sometimes. Um, but my son gets up in the morning at, at 5.30 every day and I make him pancakes at 5.30 every day. Just the two of us, chocolate chip pancakes or chocolate chip waffles every single day. Uh, and then we watch SpongeBob until he goes to school at eight, they leave at eight o'clock. I don't do client work until nine or 10 every day, so everything I do before that is for myself. And let me, get, let me, let me tell you something really quick, um, and, then I'll, and then I'll tell you a funny story. Uh, if you get to the end of the day and you haven't finished a client project and the deadline is the next day, what are you gonna do? You're gonna keep working. If you get to the end of the day and the thing you didn't get done was for yourself, what are you gonna do? Put it off. So if you do your own stuff first in the morning, if you get, get one thing done that's gonna move your own stuff forward in the morning and then do your client work, every day you've made progress on your own thing. So I always, I do my stuff in the mornings. Cause I know at the end of the day I'm tired, I'll just put it off and not do it. You ever um, eat, eat that frog? Oh you yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, 100% get that stuff done. Eat that frog. Um, but like profitable project plan, uh, my course, uh, I had been talking about doing that for, for a long time and I never found time and I was kept putting it off and I'm like, I don't have time for this, I don't have time for this. I was on vacation at the Lemmas. We were, we were uh, at the Lemmas in the summer and Chris was like, just get it done. And I'm like, no, I don't have time. And he said, I'm going into a two hour meeting, sit down and write the content for the sales page. I want it when I come back out. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> and he went into his office and closed the door. And like, that was it. There was no more conversation. So I sat there on my phone and I'm like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I wrote the sales page for it. And he comes out and he's like, send it to me. <laughs> okay. And I sent it to him and he sat down and he built the ugliest beaver builder site <laughs> ever. That beaver builder's fault. Not Beaver Builder's fault, <laughs> but he built, like, it was so ugly. And it, was, it had, like, a placeholder YouTube video in it that had nothing to do with my, like, my course. It used a URL that I hated. And he was like, here's a username and password. And knowing that I'm like, I have to fix it. I have to fix it. I had never seen a Beaver Builder video. Like, they're my friends. And I'm like, sorry, I've never even looked at your thing. Um, I had never watched a tutorial. I had never seen a video. I'd never done anything. Chris like, here's the username and password. Fix it. And I was dying. And I'm like, I have to fix this. And I go in. Testament to their product. I was able to do every single thing I wanted to do on that page, not ever having watched a tutorial or anything. I was able to make every change I wanted to make. And it went live, what, like three days later? And I put the course for sale, the beta, and I put the beta up, and 40 people were in the beta, and it was amazing. And then every, I'm in the middle of the sixth one right now. We're in, this will be week nine of the, of the sixth run of it. Nice. Um, but, but every time, like for every single time, Brian would see Chris afterwards, because he's like, Brian's just, Brian gets all the money notifications. And so every time he'd be like, thanks for making Jen get that done. <laughs> thanks for making Jen get that done. Uh, but but the impact that it was able to make because my goal was to diversify income. Because up until that point, 100% of my income was relying on client services. 
And I wanted to diversify some of that so I could work a little bit less and do some other things and try some other things. And, and uh, yeah, <laughs> and, uh, and I've been able to do that through, through courses. And now I have lucrative leads as well. And uh, Content Camp is a, Accelerate is a retreat. <laughs> it's a weird cough you got. Excuse you, should me? Get, you should get that uh, checked out. Yeah, I do a retreat for women business owners. The next one's in October called Accelerate. And uh, I finally have time I, that I'm doing a three day live event in September, uh, nice. two days before WordCamp Sacramento. But it's all content. It's, nice. co it's called Content Camp, it's a workshop. Very so nice. uh, you're doing all the work there. But I'm really, really excited about that. And this is the first time I've had room in my business to be able to play with ideas. And a couple years ago, I had said to Brian, I spent my whole career building everybody else's stuff. Like, I'd like a chance to build something on my own. And I didn't have time to do it because we were so bogged down in client work. Yeah. And profitable, launching Profitable Project Plan and doing that gave me enough space in my business to have time to be able to explore and play and see, try new things and like create content camp and do those things that have been really, really fun. Thank you so much for, sh for sharing everything. I really appreciate it. Thanks.